Hey guys, we're in my air conditioned garage today working on the 4Runner. It's about uh, 96 degrees outside, but uh, it's nice and 83 in here, which is, you know, it's not room temperature, but it's a heck of a lot of light, nicer than 96. Uh, anyway, so we got the 4Runner in here, and today we're talking about some differential drop spacers. These are bought from 4Crawler Off Road. <coughs> 4Crawler sells ball joint spacers, which is a cheap and easy way to effectively lift your four, your IFS 4Runner or pickup. But when you buy those spacers, which you can see right in there, so you can see the ball joint spacers there, but when you do that, it puts your CV joints at a much greater angle, and uh, over time that can wear them out. So, the solution is these spacers. These are differential drop spacers. They lower your differential so that uh, the angle between them and your, your front suspension is about the same as stock. Uh, real cheap and easy. But enough about your girlfriend. Let's put these things in. Alright, here we are underneath the 4Runner. You can see one of the differential mounts there. And there's another one right there. Uh, I forget which one it is. One of these has a welded nut on top and one, you know, it's captured to the frame and the other one does not. Uh, but no matter. Let's put this thing in. So the process is pretty straightforward. You remove that bolt in the large cup washer there. You do the same over here. And then you insert the spacer. So the spacer goes between the frame and the differential mount to lower the differential down. And you just do that on both sides and bolt it all back up. So let's see what we can do. Okay, these bolts are both 19 millimeter. So you got a 19 millimeter socket on there and the breaker bar. Let's see if you can break some bars. Okay, we got it broken loose. There is actually a nut on top of this one. So I got that 19 millimeter wrench pushing up against the frame. Alright, so we got that one out. Now we're just going to do this one. But uh, we're not going to take it all the way out yet because we don't have anything supporting the differential. I'm just dropping down and smacking me in the chest. So, support it and then loosen it up. Alright, so now the differential is hanging down, but it's impinged. It's <laughs> It's bumping into the sway bar, which we're also going to drop because we've got the deluxe kit which drops the sway bar down. But uh, we can't install the diff drop until the sway bar is lowered. So let's go ahead and drop the sway bar down. There's two 12 millimeter bolts on both sides on this little pillow block here. Let's pull those out. All right, so now we got the diff unbolted from the frame, and we got the sway bar out of the way. Just hanging right now. So now we're going to lower the differential down with hydraulic axis enough so we can fit those spacers into there. Alright, so here we have the OEM cup washer and that flat washer. And then we got these new bolts. And then we got the new bolt. So the new bolt goes through both of those. And then we insert this into there. Alright, so we got that bolt in there. It is very difficult to get started. You're going to have to get creative with some pry bars and stuff like that. Getting it in between the frame, up here. Uh, over there we can see I got my breaker bar. And uh, I actually had to use this scissor jack here to push up on the bolt to get it started once I had it sort of lined up with the hole. Uh, but it's working fine. I got it all threaded in there. So now the final thing to do is just to tighten up these two bolts and uh, hold the nuts on top. All right, we got those tightened down there on both sides. Very sweet. And now let's focus on the sway bar drop brackets. So here's the, the drop spacer. Pretty simple piece of uh, probably Delrin or something like that. Even comes with grade eight bolts and washers. Correct length. So let's put these on. All right, so the spacer just goes right on top of the pillow block there for the sway bar. And then you put the longer bolts in. It's probably not a bad idea to grease these bolts so that they're easy to come out later. They're easy to take out later. Alright, so now we're outside. In the hot and humid weather. And you can see under here, 
they have the spacers installed there and the other differential drop spacer there we got both spacers for the uh, sway bar you can see the water there dripping from my working air conditioning condenser uh, well evaporator technically is what it's dripping from yep I, uh, I did have to re-drill the holes in the Delrin bushings there they were slightly too far apart but a Dremel made quick work of that um, but overall it's a fairly simple process. I'm going to send Forecrawler an email and let them know that the whole spacing was a little bit off so hopefully future purchasers won't have this issue. Uh, the hardest part I'd say, well it's actually a pretty easy process. I mean it takes a 19 millimeter wrench and uh, 12 and a 13 for the sway bar. That's all you really need. Um, well you will need a hydraulic, well a jack of some sort and a pry bar as well. Um, but the hardest part physically is really just getting the pry bar in the right place and, and lining up that, that bolt for this mount to get that all lined up. Then, I mean, tighten it up and it pretty much goes in exactly like stock. Everything up, got a couple new push rods, some gaskets, and uh, should, should be all set. I can drop it back in there. Well, I finished her up. Uh, motor was actually complete junk. I had to uh, buy another one. But it doesn't matter because I'm getting paid for it. So uh, let's see what it is. There she is. It's a uh, McCulloch Weed Eater engine. Yep, that's what I replaced it with. Went from about uh, 24 horsepower down to uh, may maybe one horsepower. Maybe, it's really that much. So uh, I'll put the camera down on and we'll do a cold start. So right here on the table saw. Alright, so here we go. Uh, show combo. Prime it. And uh, let's get ready to ink. Well, it doesn't have any gas in it right now, so I guess it's not going to be able to start. I've got to tighten up the motor mount bolts. It's not quite a not quite in there very tight but uh once I get the motor mount bolts in I gotta get an adapter shaft because all the pulleys are for a one inch shaft and this thing's got like a quarter inch square shaft so once I do that we'll be up and running again